Now we'll create a transaction to record tourist attractions. We select New, Object. This transaction will be called Attraction. For each tourist attraction, we've been asked to enter its name, the country where it's located, a photo of the attraction, and a category that describes it as a monument or a museum or show, and so on. The key attribute of this transaction will be called Attraction ID. We should always remember to type a period so that Genexus suggests a prefix and we can prevent typing mistakes. We complete the key attribute name and set its type as numeric of four digits, just like we did with the customer identifier, customer ID. As we'll probably need to create more identifiers, it would be a good idea to create a common data type for all identifiers. For instance, a type that we may call ID and has a numeric value of four digits. The data type that was created by us is called domain. For example, once we've created the ID domain, we can set several attributes to ID type, and they will all be four-digit numeric values. One advantage this provides us is that if later on we need the identifiers to be a numeric length of six instead of four, changing the domain definition will be enough to update all the attributes based on that domain in a single step. To create it, we press the tab key and in the type column we write ID equals N and we see it's auto-completed with numeric. We leave the four digit value suggested by default. After pressing enter, we can see that the attraction ID attribute has now been set as ID type. Let's take a look at the properties of the attraction ID attribute. If we're positioned on the Attraction ID attribute and press F4, this window will display several settings made for this attribute and will allow us to change them. We can see that it's based on the ID domain, and for this reason, it's a four-digit numeric value. Note that properties can be sorted alphabetically. For example, here we can see the Auto Number property. This property is set to false by default, and if we change it to true, all the new attractions entered will be automatically numbered in sequence. In other words, every time that a new attraction is added, the attraction ID attribute will be automatically assigned a new number that's bigger than the last existing number. So we're setting the auto number property specifically for this attraction ID identifier attribute. Another option could be to set the same property for the ID domain that we've created so that when we create more transaction identifier attributes, we can assign them the ID domain. And in this way, they would inherit all the domain definitions, such as the data type and all the properties configured. To see the domains created, we go to Knowledge Base Navigator, Folder View, and double-click on the Domains node. Here we can create and edit domains, in a similar way to how we create attributes. We click on the ID domain, and the Properties window is refreshed to show this domain's properties. We find the Auto Number property and set it to True. This will cause all ID type attributes to be automatically auto numbered in sequence. We go back to the Structure window of the Attraction transaction and start to create its second attribute. We add the Attraction Name attribute. We also create the name domain of character type, length 50, and set the name type for the attraction name attribute. Now we need an attribute to record the country where the tourist attraction is located. We could create an attribute called attraction country as character 50 and enter the country name when adding details. Now, what happens if we want to enter two tourist attractions from the same country? We should enter the same country name twice, and be careful to type it exactly the same. Later on, we might need to search for all the attractions in a certain country, and to get them, the country must have been typed the same way every time. Let's take a look at this case. 
Suppose that we've entered several attractions with their corresponding countries. For example, we have an attraction with identifier 1 called Louvre, located in France. An attraction with identifier 2 called the Great Wall and located in China. And another attraction with ID equals 3, the Eiffel Tower, which is also in France. We know that the Louvre is located in France and that the Eiffel Tower is also in France, but due to a typing or spelling mistake, we type the country name differently. Here, we typed France with two N's. So for the system, this country is not the same as the other one. For this reason, the solution can't be used. It seems more reasonable to enter the country only once, in a single location, and then for each attraction make reference to the corresponding country. In other words, we should define something like this. One location where countries are stored. And in attractions, we make reference to the corresponding country identifiers. The Louvre is in France. Country 2. The Great Wall is in China. 3. And the Eiffel Tower is in France. Also 2. To do this in Genexus, we'll create a transaction to record the countries and then we'll see how to assign a country to each transaction.